Yeah, we are a little early. Okay. All right, I'm going to assume that I'm live at this point. I never know when to start talking after I click the button. Maybe I can start talking before I click the button. I don't know how this works. But anyway, welcome to Tough Sound Recording, where tonight, Herman, Soy Sauce Pearl, Hello. and myself, Richard, Pitmod Nickel. <laughs> Bit mod nickel. Richard Pink Eye Nickel. Richard Pink Eye Nickel. I was listening to some Pink Eye over the weekend. Um, every now and then I get a little nostalgic and I had to I had to put something on. Uh, but anyway, uh, welcome. Tonight we are going to chat and then we're going to jam. I have lots of new stuff to play with tonight. Um, and I assume Herman has. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. No, I have this. Oh, well, you had that last time, didn't you? Yes. I, I, I changed the patch. I changed the patch. Okay, well, Herman has a new patch, and I have all sorts of new stuff. So uh, it's been a few weeks since we've been doing this. I had a ridiculous case of COVID where I was literally down for like five weeks. I, I just started, in the last two days, I started feeling like I have 100% of my energy up until that, for the last five weeks, I have slept between 10 and 14 hours a day and had zero energy besides that. So I, I've been useless. I've been trying to work. I've been trying to write some code, and I just couldn't do anything. I All I could do is sort of lay on the couch and watch YouTube, and I was, I was designing some front panels because they're pretty low intensity. So I was working on a couple things for Create, but really, oh my, I was just beat down. Herman. I had COVID too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, Unrel I would like to say unrelated yeah, yeah, yeah. from my COVID. No, we, we, uh, we picked it up in Mexico City. Uh, uh, love Mexico City, but did not love coming back with COVID. Uh, don't know how and where. Obviously, you don't usually don't know. But uh, yeah, we both got it. And it wasn't that bad for either of us, luckily. Uh, nothing like your experience. Um, really, I was kind of jacked up for about four days, uh, but didn't have a lot of the symptoms that people talk about. And my wife and I had different symptoms, uh, but we definitely do both p tested positive, but I'm, I'm negatory now. I'm so, so glad because I was worried about Stacy. I wasn't worried about you as much, but I was no, definitely I know. worried it, about Stacy. I mean, Stacey. we've been, we've been spending the last, you know, we've been spending since March of 2020 worried about <laughs> how bad can it be? <laughs> And yeah. uh, luckily it wasn't that bad. So, but I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I also recommend people, you know, be sensible and considerate of others and don't pass it around. And if someone has COVID, maybe leave soup on their porch. I bet they would like that. Yeah. And if you have COVID, stay home. Don't go get the soup. <laughs> well, go out to the porch and get it. Or you can get it from your porch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's the end of the PSA. I don't want to be controversial. No, no, no. On this. That's fine. That's, that's fine. that was the reality that we've been living through for the past four or five weeks. Uh, but that's now that's over, and we're both feeling good. It's it, it's really nice to be back at Tough Sound here and getting ready to make some sounds. Herman had sort of pre-tested everything before he got here because he said it'd been so long since we'd done this. I don't think it was quite that long, but it feels like a lifetime. Yeah. So let me catch you up a little bit on Pittsburgh Modular, then I'll talk about my rig, and Herman can talk about his rig tonight too. Pittsburgh Modular, again, because I've been sick, um, nothing crazy on the design front. Perry has been working on the new instrument that, thanks to a the factory wanting to do one more test run, uh, we did a test run of 200 units, and they all sound great. We haven't tested all 200, but the sample, I think they sent us 25 to sample. They all sound really good. So the new synth, we have 25 or 26 of them sitting at the shop now. There's 200 that live in the world. Um, all of the reviewers, all the YouTubers have them at this point. Uh we're making, I think we're making 1,600 more right now, um, this exact moment. And we're going to announce it the second week of January. I have, I've been making videos for this thing for, it feels like, 
forever. So I've got a, a fun teaser campaign that'll last a week, and then I have uh, a bunch of videos for the instrument, and they're and they're all kind of they're super weird, and they're super fun. But we ran around Frick Park in Pittsburgh here and had a good time one afternoon, and I created a million little videos from that. So that's that's kind of fun. Um, so we have that to look forward to. Someone in the Comments, do I have pricing on the 740 case yet? I do, but I can't remember what it is. Um, if you email me, I can get that to you tomorrow. I can't remember what it is. But the, all the cases are done as well. The, uh, the big one and the half-sized giant one, they're both done. They're both ready to go. But at this point, we're sort of in a weird spot because we it's too late in the year sort of to announce anything. So we're going to wait until after the synth comes out. We're going to wait a couple weeks after that, then we're going to do it. Um, but, you know, you can email me at this point if you're, you're desperate for a case. And I, and I could probably, probably help you out. Um, so that's that. We don't have any new... We're not working on... We haven't been working on any new modules in quite a while, to be honest with you. We've got a couple left in the in the uh, sort of in the line we have the oscillator the local parks oscillator we have the face shifter those are both ready to go well, you um, should call it the face shifter the face shifter <laughs> I called it the toad and by the way the toad has the best panel artwork I've ever designed ever it's good and the, I, I can't I won't be able to top it so that might be it. I might walk away from this this world after the toad no, comes out. You'll come up with. You'll always come up with cool stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that. The all the other stuff that we've been sort of playing at. Everything's been set aside because we've been working on this synth. We've been working on the Voltage Lab Two, and we've been working on. We've got another instrument in very far along that we're already into production prototypes of. And then we have the drum machine as well, which I brought, and Herman saw the drum machine for the first time today. I brought it in to show him. Um, it's, it doesn't, I haven't turned it on yet, so I don't, it doesn't work, because I haven't written the code for it. it There's no really, firmware. It looks really cool. <laughs> but I told Herman he could use his, his imagination to play it, and he, and he thought that was enough. So yeah, that's sort of a catch up on what we're doing. So it's going to be an exciting January for us. I, I can't tell you how excited I am to get this and talk about it and, and be able to have it in my case and on the table and over here and over there. I, I'm going to have just stacked up everywhere. I'm just going to have them everywhere. I can't wait, but we're not there yet. So soon, 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 soon. Though. Let me talk about what I do have and maybe why some of this stuff is interesting to me. Starting with... I'm gonna turn my turn the camera on here so you can see. I'm gonna turn Herman off for a moment. Okay, so this is this is my rig today. I bought one of these Korg SQ64s a couple of weeks ago, and the reason I bought it is because they went on ridiculous sale on Reverb for $129, and I thought, well, I'm working on the sequencer for the Voltage Lab 2 right now. Let me sort of understand why maybe people don't aren't digging this thing. Um, but I've been using it now for about a week or so, and I really like it. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty great. Um, so I've been enjoying that, and I'm going to use it tonight. This is going to sequence everything that I do. I took all the sequencers out of my case, and it's just this thing tonight, sequencing everything on that I do. Uh, I also have this Fairfield circuitry uh, pedal, which is like a, a lo-fi tapey kind of, like bad tape kind of pedal. It has a low pass gate in it, and I'm assuming it has, the, you know, some sort of filter and some sort of warbly BBD thing in it. I haven't researched it too, too much, but it sounds so far pretty, pretty good. I haven't, I've only used it for a couple hours over the last week, and it's, I, I don't know. I have the Walrus Audio Mako Delay. I've had this pedal for a while, but I sort of, because I was redoing my pedal board here, I figured, oh, I'll throw this on instead of the the uh, 
the boss delay because this will give me a little bit longer delay time and some some additional options as well and this thing maybe not the greatest delay of all time but certainly really hands-on and really easy to use and i think it sounds good uh as far as modules go i because i took all the sequencers out of my case I had room to put in a double helix, an old AD, Lifeforms ADSR, Lifeforms binary filter, a ring mod that I suspect I'll use this evening. And of course I have all of the, the local florist in here. I got two of those in here now. The koi malt, I have two koi malts. Again, probably the highest quality Fish themed malt in all of your rack. Available now until they're sold out. Quite the salesman, Herman. I have both Akapis in here, which I'm using as sort of buffers to go. I'm using one of them as a buffer to go into my pedals, and the other one is my drum submixer for the drums, which again, available now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing. I, I do have everything then going through my ridiculously big mixer. And then I decided to go out of the mixer into two wolves. So I have a left and a right channel wolf. So I can tweak a little bit here and there. And I can tweak my whole mix then. And then it's going into an additional compressor. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I have the Electro Harmonics platform, which really is... We were ABing it before we went live, and all it's really doing is acting as a limiter. It's not really messing with the sound at all. Um, maybe, you know, the I'm getting two or three green LEDs on it at any point in time. So it's all it's really doing is preventing me from sending Herman a giant spike of shit. So that is... It's never really been that much of a problem. So we're good. No, but what it what it comes down to is, you know, this is the same this is the same thing that I use at home for live streaming and everything. So, it's easier for me if I can do everything on one board. So that that module's really there less for you and more for me. Okay. But Herman, you're back on. Why don't okay. you tell do you the look fine at, people at home? Do you want to look at that? What I got? You're going to have to Okay, so uh, I loaded up a case with some vintage uh, and new Pittsburgh modular stuff and a few little um, treats. Uh, mainly I'm doing a, a percussion voice with a Captain Big O and some Laddick modules for uh, envelope and VCA and a local florist for boinginess and springiness. And uh, that's going to just be a voice. And then there's a, the classic uh, Pittsburgh low-pass gate kick. Uh, I'm skipping the snare for today. Going, I uh, have an elephant voice and a narwhal voice. It's all going over to my mixer, Alan Heath uh, Mix Wizard uh, 1442. And then some effects, uh, Eventide Rose, which is, I think, a really great delay. It does so, so, so much. Red Panda Context, which is a cool 80s-ish 80s -ish reverb. And The Broker, which is my distortion, which is in a pre-fader oxend configuration in the mixer, returning to its own channel. So everything's returning to the channel, and I mix the whole show uh, from that. And I'm going to play that as my, that's kind of my instrument more than anything. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, we pretty much good to go. We are pretty much good to go. You want to turn oh. this back to... Yeah, yeah. And one more thing. Um, I, I definitely want <laughs> I always send out love to uh, the brethren uh, uh, from Indigenous Resistance somewhere in Eastern Africa. It's amazing whenever they tune in. Uh, you can see there. there's always some uh, <laughs> internet obstacles. So uh, it's great for them to be here. Uh, Lenny is here, the Bajak Bros, 
gar animal, ginkgo. It's, it's beautiful. This is all I need. Just a few folks. I would like to mention to the people in the chat, um, I don't care if anybody swears in the chat. It doesn't bother me. But it does get flagged, and I do have to approve it. So um, it may take a minute before I approve it, or if I don't know if Danielle's on the stream, if Danielle approves it. Um, I suspect Create Audio is sleeping, so they're probably not going to be approving anything. Um, but yeah, that's that. It's good to be back, and I'm ready to do this. Herman, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get weird. Okay, so le uh, le I'm going to, you just tell me what to do with this camera here. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's good. Okay. Well, let's wait. Let's get all the... There's some serious behind-the-scenes stuff here. Um, you know what? I'll just set it up. All right. Let's jam.
Thank you. 
Okay, I'm ready. Oh, you've already turned the mics on. Hello! We're the people with microphones. Is that okay? Yeah, that's, that's good enough for YouTube. How about that? That's even better for YouTube. Okay, great. This is some high-quality entertainment. The, at the very end, I soloed you because I could not believe the crazy shit that was coming out of your, of your system. <laughs> yeah, that was sort of a frantic um, excursion there where I brought in the local parks oscillator there at the end doing this sort of uh, 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 digital ring mod thing. And then I was like, shit. I need an envelope, but oh, I didn't want was, it to stop. That, that was the thing, yeah. So, were... so I very quickly, I'm like, oh, that's right. The mixer has voltage control over the first four channels. So I just very quickly found a function generator from the function junction and plugged that into the CV input on channel three, and then I was good to go. But it was uh, a frantic pace to get there but it, it all worked it i meant that to come in as a drone and it, it i thought it worked really well that way but then i was like oh i need it i i need it to be clocked too and sure but overall i think that was fun we found a, a couple really interesting things in there yeah it was um, very very fun i sometimes want to solo out the noise channel so people can hear all the craziness that's going on from that because i can take all my individual sounds, the iPad, and then the stereo mix from Richard, and I can send it to this distortion and then bring it in up on its own channel. And it's it, it's the craziest overtones, and, like, it's just very cool. Definite secret weapon. I like it. It's interesting because I then start to tweak my sounds to the distortion, and it sounds super cool. And then you pull it out, and I have, like, a whole new sound, like... Wow, that sounds like that. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, because you're listening, you're you're adjusting it to what you're hearing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it just especially crazy complex sounds like that. At one point, I had this weird hit going on with Borderlands that was just doing this this pulsing, this like hit on the downbeat of every two measures. And um I was running that through the distortion and it was just this like <laughs> kind of thing every two bars plus a little bit of some other sounds and then when i you could hear when i switched to that really active kick drum it was just all of a sudden you know because someone was saying something about ducking and there's really no ducking going on it's just the overloading of this distortion channel it's like a dual distortion pedal so there's just you know there's only so much space before it yeah goes into complete clipping and i guess the the circuitry is fighting Oh, the, all the inputs are fighting over which overloads it more. And, and low end also tends to, you know, tap out first. You get that same, that same effect happens in filters. It, I know it happens in our filter, and, I, and I'm sure it happens in, I know it happens in other filters, where the level coming in has a direct... Um, control over the amount of resonance you can get. So full resonance with a lower input signal gives you more headroom for more resonance because the resonance is only going to take up the amount of space between the signal level and the ceiling. Oh. So if you come in with a lower signal level, you have more headroom for resonance. Mm -hmm. And if you come in blasting away, uh, you have very little room for resonance. Interesting. Yeah, because even with this... I'm managing the imp the levels of all my sounds going into the distortion circuit, and I can hear I can hear as it starts to basically max out. So mm -hmm. it's really actually more interesting, although it's noisier, to to leave like you said more headroom. And this thing has two is two channels, so you can cascade two gain circuits into each other, or one into the next. It sounds really good. It's a clon, and what's the other side? No, it's. It's two of, I think it's two, uh, I think it's like either two rats or two, oh. or two, 
Uh, what's the Ibanez, the famous? The green, the green pedal. The we'll green just refer you to the JHS show, and you can find that out on your own time. You should know what is it. What it is? It's Why should I know? I don't know anything about it's pedals. It's the famous. I don't have any distortion pedals. All right, it's the same. It's the famous Ibanez green distortion. Is that the tube screamer? Tube screamer. All right, I do know. I'm a liar. Look it up. Look, I I, I could be wrong. It's whatever whatever Matthew. I mean, uh, yeah, Matthew's effects, the broker. It's two of those. Two. I thought you had. Didn't you have something that has a claw in it? Yeah, I have a, using it. it's a claw and a king of tone, but this thing's kind of oh, cooler, it's, and it's smaller. Okay. I like I it. Be, I have my bubble reading glasses on, so even though that's only four feet away from me, it's just a blur of pedal. <laughs> Hermit is now getting up to switch his pedal. Oh, no. It was stolen. Thieves came in the night. That's all they took. <laughs> I certainly enjoyed um, all of my sounds that I was getting. One thing I noticed is that certainly with this uh, Fairfield pedal, it's, it's it's very subtle. And to use in the context of what we're doing, it's difficult to get some of that effect to come through. I really have to push it to the more extreme levels to get some of that effect that I'm looking for. Uh, but it, it certainly it did a nice job when I asked it to. Uh, I have the East Beast running through that and then through the Zoom, which is just running a tape echo. Um, but the East Beast has been doing some serious heavy lifting tonight, and I think it has sounded fantastic the whole time. The other voice I have going on is the double helix into a binary filter, which is an early version of the filter of crows. I should probably use the filter of crows, but it's all the way up here, and I'm this one's right here. And then I'm controlling both the low pass gate and the filter cutoff with an ADSR. So it's again, it's sort of just a simple voice, but those are my two main voices that I'm playing with. The elephant, Tom, just making weird spacey sounds with it. And I've been playing with the hi-hats a little bit. And then at the very end, I added some snare just because I felt like we needed a little snare. Yeah, I heard it come in, and it was like it was like a very, very dry sound. And then I started doubling it with yeah. the, with an elephant, and then I was running it through distortion. So the, the, the snare had all kind of weird character tones to it. I, w I did want to say one other thing. It's funny messing with this huge system with even with the full size cables because I've been so focused on something small uh -huh. and it's funny to have like wasteful just you know modules that I'm not even using like there's a whole synthesizer box right here that is an entire original analog Pittsburgh voice that I'm, I'm not touching it it's, no! it's just, I'm sorry I, I can't use it right now but it's I mean it's amazing I was adding modules to my, because I took out all my sequencers earlier today because I'm using this Korg SQ64. And so I was like, oh, I have all this room. And I was like, I'm going to put an SV1B in here. And I didn't have an SV1B at my house. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to put a West Pest in there. And I didn't have a West Pest at my house. So this became, these are the modules I have <laughs> at my oh, house. Oh, because I thought it was an SV1 first. Well, that's the East Beast sounds. No, no, no. When I looked over at it, it was about the size. Of, oh, of a, yeah, of yeah. I can see that. I yeah. can see that. You, yeah, you were asking me some weird questions. I'm like, Herbert is obviously a double helix, but now I get it. You're upside down and turned around. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah, that's what it was supposed to be, but um, I apparently I didn't have any at my house. You, so you failed us. <laughs> I, I sort of. Uh, I shuffle stuff around from my house in the office so much, it's hard. I, I don't even try to keep track of where anything is anymore. I just I look for something, and if it's not in one place, it's going to be in the other. I have been using the, the cascading delay network tonight as well. Because I had so much space, I put that in. 
And I am using two channels, but I'm just using them as single delays. I'm not doing any of the weird cascading delay network stuff with it. I'm down to one analog delay unit because um, I had two. I gave one to Michael Johnson because he didn't have one, which I find astonishing. <clears throat> so I'm down to one. So I suspect next year we'll do another analog delay pedal or analog delay module of some type because I can't have just one analog delay module. That's yeah. Could we could we ever get Michael to do a set uh, with you know actual Pittsburgh instruments? I don't know if he would. I, he would. I don't think he would do that, but. <laughs> I would love to see that. Um, I don't know what he's... I'm sure he's working on something, but I don't know what he's working on uh, art-wise at the moment. I suspect it'll be interesting. I used, I used to love this performance that he would do with two radios, and he would intermodulate them somehow, like by physically... Did you ever see him do that? Mm-hmm. It was absolutely crazy. It was very... It's like... A, Almost like a magician. No, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Michael now. It's it's probably been six weeks or so because I had the COVID. I sort of went off the grid, so I'm anxious to uh, to regroup. We uh, I had this insane idea for like a um, superhero comic book movie, which I wrangled Perry and Michael into doing with me. I showed them the script and I'm like, here's what you get to do and here's how stupid it's going to be. And they're like, well, if you're selling it like that, I'm in. So, And I, I also showed them the sort of pre-production. I had done um, some scenes sort of fully so they could get the understand the look of it and everything. Um, and so we were supposed to go film this thing and then I got sick. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll get to Oh, I didn't realize you were actually planning on doing it. Oh yeah. This okay. is Okay. I while I was while I was sick, I did a lot of the special effects and a lot of the sort of non-acting video stuff in the background. So because a lot of it's green screen stuff, I I wanted to have the sort of sets built in Final Cut already so I could have an idea of what angles to film us at and that kind of thing. All this said, this thing, this video is ridiculous and uh, don't have your hopes up too high for it. But I wanted to do something that wasn't, because I've just done like 15 videos for the new synth. I wanted to do something that wasn't a commercial. So I thought, well, this would be fun. I can make this weird video with these people that I enjoy making videos with. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So hopefully in a couple months, episode one will uh, come out. Herman, what do you think? Do you want to do, let's do another jam. Yeah. Yeah.
Mm-hmm.
Hey. Hi, everybody. Are you going to turn me down? So I don't need to do it. I don't need to touch anything. I can just let it go. So there's there was a lot of talk I noticed in the chat about the Korg SQ64. Now, I've had it about a week, and I will give you my honest review and tell you a little bit about why I bought it. I bought it because I'm currently writing software for the sequencer. Sorry, I'm fucking with the mic. I bought it because I'm currently writing the software for the sequencer for the Voltage Lab 2. And in my mind, I was like, shit, why did they drop this price to this thing down to $129? Why does it suck? Like, what's wrong with it that um, they can't sell them? So I ordered one for $129. And I have to say... The software, it's not terribly buggy. It's just not, it feels like it was written by someone that doesn't perform live. Um, from my point of view, because that's how I use it. Now, you can save patterns and songs and all that. And I, I don't do any of that. I just sort of jam with it live. So to me, it's just an interface to interact with my instrument live. And then as soon as I shut everything off, I don't care if I ever hear or see those patterns again. It doesn't matter to me. So from my point of view, it's very direct and I can make interesting bass lines very quickly. You can select, you know, major, minor, and there's a bunch of that kind of stuff. So you don't have to worry too much about playing wrong notes and all that for quick bass lines, especially if you know, you're not pre-monitoring, which we don't hear. It's sort of <laughs> what, you, what you hear is what's happening at that moment. Um, yeah. So neither, neither of us use headphones, and, and I'll basically I'll tap out something in my sequencer and just tap it by eyeball. Yeah, because sometimes our, our our one is even lost. Yeah, or the one the one tends to shift around because, and that's that's great. I I kind of I dig that because that it makes you th hear things differently. Uh, but the SQ sixty four, I it it's not perfect, but for a modular, especially for drums, it's it's pretty good. Now I, I do get lost every now and then, and this, like I said, the software is not great. It's not perfect, but for one hundred twenty five twenty nine dollars, this thing's pretty amazing, and it has certainly given me some ideas as to yeah, I can see why it's not as popular as it should be, um, given the form factor and what it can do. But I can also see, okay, yeah, this this is great, and I need to make sure that I do this or improve on this uh, in how you interact with it for the Voltage Lab too. So I love this thing. I don't know. I it it's like a little bit of voltage research. It is a little bit of voltage research, and it, I dig it. I don't know. I I think uh, I wish it had. Like I was telling Herman halfway through the jam, I'm like. I wish this thing had 32 knobs on it, but it doesn't. Have you have you worked with a beat step or a key step? I because because Buscrates loves the key step. I have a key step and I have a beat step. I haven't used. I've had. We have a couple beat steps, but they're they've been in boxes for years. Um, I have. We've bought probably 12 key steps over the years. They're the sort of generic MIDI controller that we use everywhere. Uh, but I recently also bought an Akai Mini something, I don't know. Um, they're competitor to the key step. And I have to say, I'm not, I don't love the feel of the keyboard of it, but everything else is infinitely better. It has a lot more controllable uh, you know, drum pads. It has pitch and mod wheel, but then it has an XY axis joystick it it's got a bunch of knobs that we can assign so for my for what i do which most of the time is just writing software for work it it works really well because it gives me ways to test things that i couldn't do with my key step but i do prefer when i'm writing music for whatever reason i do prefer the key step because i think the keys feel better 
Um, they're right. both mini keys, but I think the Akai thing, the keys just, uh, I don't maybe uh, what it probably is, and I'm not going to blame Akai for this, is it's probably because I've had key steps now for, I don't know, eight years, nine years, since whenever they came out, and that's all I've used. So this is, thing is different, and because it's different, it's weird. But I like everything else about it. Um, just the keys are different than what I'm used to, I guess. So anyway, the Korg SQ64, I yeah, if, it's if you're interested, it's worth it because it's, I don't know, I dig it. Um, and it runs off of a, a, the same, like your power block? You can run it off of a 2-amp power supply, which I don't have and it doesn't come with. Or you can run it off of USB, which I do have, but it doesn't even come. Oh, it comes with a USB cable. But the uh, the brightness is significantly dimmer when you power it with USB, but that's all I have. So I am ordering, in the next couple of days, I'll order a proper power cable for it. It looks like it should be a guitar pedal cable because it's uh, negative. It's 9 volts and it's uh, center negative, but... It's a smaller barrel plug, so you can't just use, like, a Boss pedal adapter for it. Okay. So I can't run it off of my pedal rig. But, which it, I, but it needs two amps. It says two amps, yeah. So I'm going to have to get a, a special thing for it, which is kind of a bummer because I would love to run everything off of my pedal board power supply, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. I'm just. But that said, until I'm allowed to show the Voltage Lab 2 controller and use that in these types of uh, performances this is going to be my thing. But but having used this, do you now feel like, okay, I could do I could make something that I would want to use for something like this? Well, what I do is I, this because I'm forced to work in the Korg way, um I find bits of that Korg way that I enjoy. And, like, I like that I can pull up a keyboard and play a bass line in. I don't necessarily like how it translates that 100% of the time. Because it does, it ties notes together in very strange ways. Uh, but you can play a bass line. Like, you, it'll pull up a keyboard and you can play a bass line. That, that I like. So that is something I'm like, oh, obviously... The Voltage Lab 2 thing has to be able to do that because it's so fast and it's so in the moment that you don't yeah. have to worry about turning knobs. Now, this only has a couple, one knob that you can turn to change the pitch for each one, so that would be a nightmare. Um, the Voltage Lab 2 sequencer has a, there's a million well, that's knobs. Cool. It, no, that's, that's cool. That I you... think that's because the Voltage Lab 2 controller also includes, includes the touch controller just like the, uh, the Voltage Lab had. I want... But this time it's quantized and it's controlled digitally. I want to uh, make sure that you can play it like that because it's it's so fast and it's so rewarding immediately. Yeah. So I think <laughs> we've talked in the past about how we need to start incorporating bass lines into what we do. That's sort of the last <laughs> bit. So this, I think, is a step in that direction. And as I get better using it. A step. Wow. Yeah. As I get better at using it, I think it'll be, uh, it'll push even further. But that said, I had a great time tonight, Herman. I, I really yeah. enjoyed the jam tonight. I enjoyed the setup that I brought. I, I thought what you were doing tonight was awesome. There were some moments. There was, there was a f <laughs> one moment in particular when I, before I got up to use the restroom, where you were like, just give me a minute. I gotta, I gotta do this. It was sort of that bass wobble thing. And I oh, totally it was, it agree. Was this sustained? Yeah, it was this sustained? And then what was going? What were you doing there? Because I had no idea. So it was. It was just. Um, so the the way I do a kick is with the low pass gate, and sometimes it's right on the edge of self oscillation because there's a frequency and then there's a and there's a resonance control. So this is this is the original low pass gate in low pass gate mode. No, no, in filter mode. Right. Yes. Just in the low in the low pass filter mode. Okay. So usually I I bus in something else to to uh, to frequency modulate it, but this right now I'm not doing that. 
So it's just you when you when you raise the frequency on the filter, it'll it'll really start to feed back. And so I just bumped it up just a little bit, and it was sustaining. And then I ran that through the uh, through the distortion. And so and then I was doing the delay on like flanging. So this thing is so amazing because it goes from essentially microseconds to like I don't think they can see oh yeah they can't see I was going to say yeah. they can't see what you're pointing at but the they even, can. The even you're pointing row, at the delay. Even tied rows. I mean this thing will do everything. This is the the coolest delay I've ever messed with. And it's got all kinds of modulation options, but the range of it is so crazy cuz you press in the 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 um the delay rate and it becomes coarse tuning and when you let go it becomes fine tuning. Have you tried the even tied rows with closer to modular levels because i know the way the way you have everything everything is routed through your mixer through your you know we're in a recording studio this is herman's right tough sounds st this is this is the recording studio so everything is going through his main console but have you tried running closer to modular levels because that's the way i do you know i attenuate stuff a little bit but a lot of times mm. my pedals are getting really hot signals well i i there's a switch on the back that says oh, let me see hold on Oh, so it has a line level signal on the back. It so has a guitar level and a line level. Okay, signal. so yeah, that's gonna. But in this, my black hole has the same thing. In this configuration, it doesn't seem to actually make a difference when I'm because I'm using aux send, so I only send it as it's probably electrically not exactly right, but I just send it the amount of aux that I want from each individual channel. So it's okay. I'm not stuck with like running an instrument straight into it. Okay. And I can overdrive this thing. It, it does. It does so much, and the the front end of it is almost like vintagey. It it'll distort. It's like soft clipping going. So, so it probably has the same. It probably responds exactly the same as my black hole does. The even tight black hole pedal that I use for reverb. Being, and, being oh, and an even tight pedal. And so yeah, these are great for modular stuff. And Absolutely he, he fantastic. turned a knob tonight. I. T <laughs> that was the thing uh, for the. I've had this black hole and I've used it for a long time and it went every time we play live, but I just, I bought it and then I just turned it on and I just left the knobs exactly the way they were. But tonight, halfway through the jam at some point, <laughs> Herman was like, whoa, what was that sound? And I'm like, I turned one of the knobs. He goes, yeah, you did. That sounds awesome. I said, I learned it from watching you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... I I, I kind of determined when you lent me that thing that it just wasn't for me because this this uh, context is more similar to algorithmic 80s reverb so it, it's not it just you can you can just set it to a hall and do have it do what a hall does and have all kinds of controls that thing yeah. is just sort of this one even tied sound it's like noise wash yeah it's too it's too a little too broad for me these are more like traditional food group reverb algorithms. So, um, Mr. Watts said, can the East Beast and West Pest self-oscillate? Can you self-oscillate the filter on the East Beast? The East Beast will not self-oscillate, and the West Pest doesn't have a filter, so that can doesn't... You, can you trick it by any type of uh, creative patching? Not that I know of. Um, you it, can't, you for can't. the West Pest, no, on the East Beast. I mean. On the East Beast, no, no. There, you, it doesn't matter how much, what you do, it's never going to self oscillate. No, under but there's any no, situation. There's, there's no patching you could do to, no, because that's, um, like, you have to on the, uh, filter of crows and on the, the life forms binary filter, like there's a switch to enable self-oscillation or not so we didn't and that changes the circuitry behind the scenes we didn't include that circuitry on the east piece so it right there's no way and the, but that's one of the nice things and the interesting things about a state variable filter topology is that you can get nearly infinite self-oscillation or s nearly infinite resonance without self-oscillation so what that means is if you give the resonance the headroom, and I was talking about this in the in the break, which was like 14 hours ago now, but if you give, if you turn down the levels going into the filters, all the Pittsburgh filters, um, the resonance 
will take up the remainder of the space. So if you give it a small signal and then you crank up the resonance, you're going to get a ton of resonance, but it's never going to self-oscillate, which is incredibly musical and really interesting. So that's sort of a benefit of that. Now, with the filter of crows and the what, binary what, and filter. And what about the crow? Oh, and the crow. No, not the crow. But the crow, it does do something interesting with the when that because it has so much gain. I always find when I'm doing kicks and things like that, I have to really put it right on the edge. And we talked about modding. One yeah, of that's a. The crow is different. The crow is just an insane sort of uh, overdrive preamp before the filter. I love it. The filter of crows has that same insane overdrive pre, but you can switch it off. Um, but it also, it, in addition, it has the additional resonance circuitry that allows the resonance to go into self oscillation. Es essentially, pick up, like if you go full resonance in normal mode and then switch to unstable, as you turn the knob then the other way, it sort of continues. Oh, okay. It's travels until you get to about usually around ten o'clock on the it'll it'll just end up crapping out. But right at the edge, right before it dies, and I was doing a little bit of that tonight, uh, right before it fails, you get this beautiful like square wave overdrive. It just sounds really, really are there nice. Any, are there any left in the shop anywhere? No. We had one that was reserved and the guy just sort of he ghosted us, so someone sent me an email last week or two weeks ago, and they're like, hey. And I said, yeah, here, here you go. Oh, and wow. And that, that was it for Filter of Crows. Um, I, maybe I can borrow one someday. <laughs> <laughs> I only have two. Okay. And they're one of I only have one production model, and I have one prototype. And I was just thinking that today as I was building my – putting the modules in here for tonight – I was like, shit, I only have one elephant. I only have one narwhal. I need more of these before we run out. So I, next time I'm in the shop, I'm going to grab a couple modules. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, I they're definitely your, They're your modules. I mean, two there's, elephants. there's a couple that I've never even played with. Like, I've never played with a cascading delay or cascading. The cascading delay network? Yeah, I've never. I don't even, think it's for you. I want to try it sometime. I'll leave it with you tonight. Really? Yeah. Okay. Memberships has its perks. <laughs> you got a screwdriver? We'll take it out of the case. That's no big deal. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> Look. I actually have space. Oh, you have room for it. it that looks like the perfect amount of space. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, anything else? Closing? Thanks for hanging with us. I, I can't believe that anybody watches this shit. Tonight was super fun because we had some weird moments, but... They all led to really different, interesting things. Like I think like we do every time we do this, we, we tend to find different spots. And tonight, for me especially, the, the sequencer and the types of modules I had and everything really changed what I was doing. And I, I think I'm going to get better at it. Especially the sequencer, I'm definitely going to get better at it because I'm not. I was fumbling around a little bit more than I wanted to. Um, but, and I, I made a couple of them like, oop, didn't mean to do that. But for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think another another couple of weeks with this thing, and I will be, you know, I won't have enough to look at it, and I'll just be able to do it. It's crazy that you basically replaced all the sequencers in your case with that one. Yeah, and I I miss the sliders. For the, the, but I, what I really enjoy with this is that you can, you know, you can set it to 64 steps and really just play something in and then have a bunch of nothing, which right. you can't do with a 16 step sequencer that's just constantly. Well, looping. I mean, I just have to say, Drambo as a sequencer is incredible. And I really don't think I'll ever get into any of these hardware sequencers because everything you can do with this, it's, I don't know. I mean, if you can see it, like just have the probability like that. I need yeah. it. Yeah, I, you know, and that's that brings up an interesting point because I, I think really, the SQ sixty four, and maybe this is where it fails a little bit, is that it's sort of halfway in between. Um, it's it's a physical 
sequencer, but at the same time, there's never a moment where it's knob per function. So it always feels like I'm interacting with an interface and not interacting with an instrument. And I, I think that is probably the big difference. Um, okay. It, it, this comes from an incredibly biased point of view um, as someone who just designed a ridiculously large uh, sequencer for an instrument. Um, right. And I'm kind of partial to the way I did it. So if you're listening to this, please don't, it's not a knock on the on the cork sequencer. This thing is really interesting and really fun, um, but to me, it's. I, I think Hermit has a valid point where I, I think this there's it's a, it's a very it feels like you're interacting with software more than it feels like you're interacting with hardware that I would prefer. Um, right. But at the same time, it's great. But Drembo is it's fantastic. It's and I think if. If I was in, if I had an iPad, I, I think that's the way I would go. They yeah. don't ma- I don't think they make software for uh, Android tablets. So no, unfortunately, oh, <laughs> iOS is kind of completely dominant in the tablet music ecosphere. Oh, Yodas asks, is the SQ64 menu divey crazy button combos? No, not at all. It's it's really hands on. There's an edit. There's a shift button to get to a secondary function, but other than that, it's super straightforward. The only time you do any menu divey stuff is if you want to change, like really, like the MIDI channel or you know global stuff like that. Um, other than that, there's no, no. You never dig it in. And what's super the other? Fast. What's the other Korg sequencer that people have been using? The SQ16, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I have one of those, but that's very analog. It's very direct. Uh, okay. It has 16 knobs, and it's very straightforward. Okay. Um, I yeah, th- this has been a sort of a um, a disturbance in the force. This this sequencer is like making the rounds. A lot of people are talking about it. Well, tonight certainly because I've been using it. Are there? Oh, Yoda's. Or I'm sorry, Sam. Asks, are there any updates around Voltage Lab 2? I've spent two weeks trying to get... I've been frustrated with the MIDI. It's not working the way I want it to. Um, but the voicing... Perry worked on the voicing while I was sick. And it sounds fucking ridiculous. It be- is, It's so unique in the way it sounds because of the oscillator structures that it... It lives in its, its its own world, and it's fantastic. It's it takes the Voltage Lab sort of DNA, and just it's the instrument that the Voltage Lab couldn't have been because we weren't that good yet. <laughs> but it's it's stunning. Um, it, it's almost like the next instrument is not at all what the Voltage Lab Two is. So it'll be interesting to put that out and then be like, and this next thing is not this. Well, I think that's the best thing because the instrument we have coming out the second week of January doesn't sound anything like like they're so wildly different. Um, that yeah, I don't. They're it's it's different different instruments. They both have their own voice, and, and I think that's the beauty of analog and working with Michael is he creates these voicings that are so distinct and so musical uh, mm-hmm. that they that I just I love. I love interacting with them. Uh, the Voltage Lab 2, if the stars align, we will show it at Superbooth, but I would be stunned at this point. But, hey, who knows? I hope so. Uh, uh, the, the Voltage Lab 2 will not have the sequencer optional. It's It's... A one, it's you get everything. It's we're not going to sell the modules separately. Um, it's all one instrument, and you can. I'm sure though, you'll be able to. If you're like, oh, I want the voice, but I don't want the sequencer, you could part it out and sell the sequencer and the on reverb, and you know, 
for I have no idea how much money, but yeah. <laughs> but that that's an option. Uh, but we do. But before we get to the Voltage Lab Two, there is another instrument coming up, which I'm. It's I'm more proud of it than anything we've ever done up to this point. It's yeah, um, it's amazing. It's good. Yeah, yeah. All right, I think uh, I think that about wraps it up. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. It was so much fun to do this. Uh, gl- Herman, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad Stacy is feeling better. Stacy is uh, still testing positive, but she is on the... No, no, no. We're, we're at the end of this thing. Yeah, she's feeling better. So Herman's testing negative. I'm testing negative. I'm feeling better. <laughs> We can resume our lives. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It's It's been an absolute blast to get back doing this. And uh, hopefully we'll be here again next Wednesday at 8 o'clock to do it again. <laughs>